If you weren't living under a rock, you'd know that Elon Musk's laughable acquisition of Twitter and his attempts to make it into some sort of free speech haven have not only utterly failed Musk's leadership, but Twitter has already lost so much money to the point where Musk is asserting that the company might have to close. How rich is that irony? Because the platform's censorship policies were so unpalatable for major advertisers and the atrocious direction Musk went with brand recognition, he's literally driven the company into bad bankruptcy. I didn't think much would change if he bought Twitter, but I know I should trust my gut when power is bestowed upon idiots. Let's talk about Musk's intentions, the buyout offer, the attempted pullout, and the eventual closure of the deal. On March 24th of this year, Musk began tweeting criticisms of Twitter going as far to poll the followers on whether the company adhered to the principle that free speech is essential to democracy, which is ironic for a guy who threatened to revoke employees' stock options if they unionized. It's because he's full of shit and only believes in stroking his own ego. Days later, he discussed the company's future with Jack Dorsey and the idea of joining Twitter's board of directors with private equity firm Silver Lake. Subsequently, Musk announced he acquired 9.25% of Twitter for a total of $2.64 billion, making him the company's largest shareholder, and as a result of this, the company's share price rose as high as 27%. Twitter then invited Musk to join the company's board, and Musk accepted this offer, but his ascension up the corporate ladder would be quickly halted as he then decided not to join the board. On the 14th of April, Musk made an unsolicited and non-binding offer to purchase the company for $43 billion to take the company private. This is all clearly in an effort to ingratiate a fascistic audience. This led to Musk announcing he'd secured financing provided by a group of banks to acquire the company because capitalism only cares about making those who are already rich richer. Something interesting that happened, two days after announcing his bid, Musk registered three holding companies under the name X Holdings in preparation for his takeover and subsequent 4chanization of Twitter. Fun fact, Word actually considers the term 4chanization an actual word because it doesn't draw out the red line under it. Anyway, speaking of things named X, a lot of people at the company Musk was involved in disagreed with the name, thinking it sounded like the name of a porn site. Musk clearly names it this way because aesthetically it has this futuristic aspect to it and sounds ingenious in the minds of conformist bootlicker tech bros. I honestly think that it does sound like a porn site, but that's also pretty based. I'm a coomer, what can I say? Here's a major promise Musk made when the deal was initially going through. Musk said that he would remake the algorithm to where it ranks tweets in the content feed open source in order to increase transparency. Another major promise he made was to remove spam bots and authenticate all real humans. Additionally, he stated that he might convert Twitter's San Francisco head quarters into a homeless shelter. After he published tweets critical of certain Twitter executives, Twitter users then harassed those executives using racist and sexist language. As of the 15th of November, he's delivered on none of these promises. Musk then secured another $7.1 in funding, a good chunk of which came from a Saudi prince. On May 13th, Musk said that the deal had been put on hold following reports that 9% of Twitter's daily active users were spam accounts. In response to a May 16th Twitter thread, in which Agrawal said an external review into the platform's users was impractical, Musk tweeted out a poop emoji, and the following day Musk reiterated that the acquisition could not move forward until Twitter could prove the aforementioned reports false, and he urged the SEC to investigate Twitter's daily user numbers. Twitter investor William Horesniak filed a class action lawsuit against Musk, alleging that he had violated corporate laws in California by manipulating the market, and the lawsuit further declared that he had violated corporate laws in California by manipulating the market. Not only this, but it also claimed that Musk wasn't permitted by the acquisition contract to place the deal on hold, and that Musk's misleading statements had contributed to declining Twitter stock prices. Musk knows damn well that you don't fuck around with the wealth of rich people because if you induce one of their losses, that's when shit really hits the fan for you, so you should be prepared to have every claim legally possible made against you. On July 8th, Musk announced his intention to terminate the proposed acquisition, claiming in a regulatory filing that Twitter was in material breach of several parts of the agreement by refusing to comply with Musk's requests for spam bot account data and dismissing high-ranking employees. Twitter formally launched its lawsuit against Musk at the Delaware Court of Chancery on July 12th, with Musk tweeting in response, 
Oh, the irony, lol. Twitter requested that the trial be held from September 19th through September 2022 before the deal's originally scheduled drop dead date on October 24th. In a tweet on August 6th, Musk challenged Agrawal to a public debate on Twitter spam bot accounts before polling his followers on whether they believed that less than 5% of Twitter accounts were fake slash spam. On August 10th, Musk sold 7.92 million Tesla shares worth a total of 6.9 billion dollars as backup should he lose the lawsuit despite previously stating that he would no longer sell Tesla stock. This is because Musk is deceitful and full of shit. On October 3rd, Musk's legal team informed Twitter that Musk had changed his mind and decided to move forward with his proposed acquisition at the originally agreed upon price of $54.20 per share on the condition that Twitter drop its lawsuit because he knew that if he went to court he'd not only get blown out of the water in the trial, but that he'd also have to pay billions upon billions of dollars in penalties. Musk stated that his purchase of Twitter was part of his ambition to create an everything app called X, which would offer many different services. God, I get the hots just hearing the name. Knowing how Musk makes grandiose promises of techro innovation that gets idiot Redditors soaring out, it's no wonder that he named it that. Well, let's see where that promise goes, knowing this guy literally said he'd have someone on Mars in 2020. In an open letter, Twitter employees condemned Musk's intentions and warned of negative consequences on the future of Twitter. The letter is only three weeks old as of now, and it's aged like wine. In the afternoon of October 27th, Musk and Twitter closed the deal. Musk immediately became Twitter's new owner, promptly firing Agrawal, Chief Financial Officer Ned Segal, Gad, and General Counsel Sean Edgett, with the executives escorted out of the company's headquarters by security. Because he has to be at the forefront of everything, and the role of CEO is much in line with the American dream and its romanticization of entrepreneurship, Musk obviously had to thrust himself into this position to sate his own ego and into a senior executive at Neuralink. Upon his acquisition of the platform, Musk also signaled his intention to do away with lifetime suspensions and unban those suspended for minor or dubious reasons. Musk obviously hasn't made any effort to fulfill this promise. Now here's where we get to the disaster that just ensued. On October 30th, it was reported that Musk wanted Twitter users to buy blue subscriptions in order to retain their blue check marks, indicating that they were verified on the platform, despite the fact that the blue check mark was to certify that those were indeed the accounts of notable public figures so no one would impersonate them. To meet the deadline set, many Twitter staff members were directed to extend their working hours. Soon after Musk's takeover, Twitter started losing $4 million a day, but blamed the income loss on activists who had called upon advertisers to cease doing business with the company. Alright, I'm gonna go on a quick little rant here. It wasn't activist groups that called on advertisers to halt doing business with the company. It was the fact that their branding strategy on the platform was absolutely destroyed because their official company accounts needed to be verified and meaningfully distinguished from parody accounts. That's why they found the platform as a hub of advertisement unfavorable. That's capitalism. The free market, bro. And even if we were to grant that it was activists, that's still completely under a capitalistic framework, so it's ironic that you'll always invoke bootstraps when the prospect of him getting taxed more comes up, but why and shift the blame on the anyone but himself when his companies lose money. Anyway, to distinguish between those who had been verified before the change and those who received the checkmark via Twitter Blue, secondary grade checkmarks labeled official were briefly added to the former's profiles before Musk overruled the feature hours later. Oh, so much for democratizing blue checkmarks so you do away with what you thought was elitism. These official badges totally aren't gonna become the next status symbol. Anyway, their grade checkmarks were inexplicably store the next day, then Twitter halted new verifications via Twitter Blue amid a spike in impersonator accounts. The wonderful ingenuity of Musk, everybody. Christ, people are such bootlickers. Conservative and Republican commentators and politicians in the US who believe Twitter discriminated against right-wing speech expressed enthusiasm for Musk's proposed changes, which is again ironic because Republicans have always championed the free market and corporations acting completely at their discretion with total indemnity. The first two weeks of Musk's tenure at Twitter have been widely described as chaotic and tumultuous by the media. Harvard professor Sandra Sucher called Musk's mass layoffs among the most poorly handled she had seen, observing that Twitter's decision to give employees a detailed briefing of who was being laid off and why was highly unprecedented. This is because Musk is an idiot con man. If all of that wasn't enough to convince you that Musk's acquisition of the company has instantly become an 
absolute dumpster fire, Musk himself claims that Twitter is losing $4 million a day in revenue. Where was that 5 minute edit button he, he told us he'd implement? Where is the open sourcing of the algorithm? They're simply not here. This is because Musk fundamentally has no actual innovative business sense and only cares about buying new IP, making absolutely unrealistic claims if his enterprise does have some ingenuity, taking credit for the technology, and then dumping the stock when it's at its highest price the next minute so he can cash out and move on to his next grift. The reason bootlickers, the manosphere, and the right in general have been hyping Musk's takeover of the platform up is because they have an almost visceral reverence for entrepreneurship 21st century futurism, authority, and nonsensical lies tech bros tell, and I absolutely can't believe that they still think he's a genius, despite the fact that Twitter might have to shut down. Do not fall for this lying idiot's trickery. Getting involved with him is poison.